So I can tell you this much. I started trying to watch The Killers of the Flower Moon. Oh, yeah? And after an hour and like 40 minutes, I decided to take a break. Which I realized when I hit pause is the exact halfway point. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a three. And a half. I'd like I'd really like to watch it. I love uh, Martin Scorsese. It's, I mean, it's 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 got its moments, but it is fucking long. <laughs> it feels so long, and I've not picked up the second half yet because it's just so. Yeah, you got you got another hour forty to go. Yeah, I know. I was gonna I was gonna try to watch like the rest of it yesterday, but I just couldn't get around to it. Actually, there was one thing that I, I started, um, I, aside from, um, I started watching uh, Masters of the Air. Um, okay. That's the companion piece that um, Apple TV did for mm. Band of Brothers in the Pacific. I loved those miniseries. I watched them. At yeah, the, I remember you had like the little tin. Yeah, I, I watch yeah. them once a year, um, and they're absolutely fantastic. They've been trying to, and you'll pardon the pun, but get this one off the ground <laughs> um, for it, 12, 13 years now. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg are executive producing. Um, Austin Butler plays the, the main, the main actor. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've seen like glimpses of it. I've just, yeah. It's, it's I, not I, something that's up my alley that I would like go in pursuit to watch yeah, though. Like I've never seen Band of Brothers either. I, man, dude, you are missing out. <clears throat> it is well, but, fantastic. I mean, but isn't like, like, like I don't go toward like war series and war movies that much it's just not my thing it's it's not so it, the the stories themselves what would what, what yes they take place in world war ii but at least with band of brothers in the pacific what gets you is the characters um and at least with band of brothers there are a huge number of actors that got their start on that show well, I know Tom Hardy was in there because yeah, I've uh, seen like something with him like jumping up and yeah, saluting Tom, from it. Yeah, Tom Hardy was in it. Michael Fassbender was in it. Um, uh, James McAvoy was in it. Oh, okay. um, Damian Lewis plays the the main actor. Ron Livingston, I think he's he's known for Office Space, but he's a really good dramatic actor too. Um, I recognize the name, but I can't think of who that was. And uh, Ron Livingston, you mean? Yeah. Uh, he he would. Um, you've seen Office Space, right? Yeah. He played Peter, the main character. Okay, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, he's he's a really good dramatic actor. Um, but yeah, it's it's a fantastic story, and the, like I said, it's the characters that that get your attention. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I watch it once a year. Hmm. Uh, well, speaking of Apple Plus, there I just got told by a friend. Um, there's a book I had recommended to him because uh, called Dark Matter, by Blake Crouch, I think the name is. I think I think I read and, that based on your recommendation too. Yeah, and it's it's a fantastic book, but apparently it's a series that's coming to Apple Plus in like May, I think. Oh, this year? Yeah. Wow. And okay. I was like, hell yeah, I'll be watching that. I, I know. Was... I also watched um, Silo, which was the the Wool books, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and I'm looking forward and hoping they continue that story. Yeah, Apple Apple's put out a lot of neat neat stuff like uh silo looked interesting foundations is supposed to be pretty good the trailer looked good for that but when i remember the story was i was like i i never ended up pulling the trigger to to watch it mm-hmm. but i still kind of go back and forth with whether, whether i want to or not um i have heard that um for all mankind is a is a sleeper that's another one i've tried i've like thought about over and over but never gotten around to actually doing yeah i'd, I'd like to it's, it's kind of a, one of those you don't expect it to be as good as it is yeah. Um. So I've been I've been meaning to try to carve out some time to watch that too. There's four four seasons. I think they're on their fourth season now. Something like that. Yeah. Um. Well, I mean, if we're talking about television, um. And granted, this doesn't come out until like mid to late April, and this is actually February right now. Uh. But I watched um. Season two of Reacher. Okay. Okay. Which yeah. does not hold up as good to this first season, but it's it's still fun. But the reason I didn't finish Killers of the Flower Moon yesterday is because just like a day or two ago, uh, The Sand Job, which is the latest episode of The Grand Tour on Amazon Prime, came out. <laughs> and I was like, yep, I'm watching that. Because <laughs> uh, watching Jeremy Clarkson, um, May, and oh, wow, I'm spacing on the last guy's name. James May and, oh, crap. I feel bad that I can't remember the other guy's name, but they, they did the uh, Top Gear for a long time. And now they do the Grand I, Tour. I never got into the, the Top Gear shows. It's fun. <laughs> I mean, 
I will say most of the top gear stuff, you probably have to be somewhat into cars. Like I, I like cars go fast, mm -hmm. but I'm not someone like, oh yeah. So when you break down under the hood, you got this hooks into this and it's got this many horsepower way over my head. But you just talk about, ooh, that car is pretty and goes fast. That I'm into. <laughs> I, but, I, I do recall one episode of, of Top Gear that I've seen where they had the, the Reliant Robin or whatever it was, the mm. three-wheeled car that they kept where flipping. Where kept flipping over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw that episode. That, that no, but it's, it's, it's like that funny stuff that I'm into. And uh, the Grand Tour for the last several years has not been the, oh, we're reviewing this car kind of thing anymore. They don't do that kind of format. It's always when they go on some big trip like an actual like grand tour and they just film all their hijinks mm -hmm. and like in this latest uh, episode um they're in um africa and they're driving down this road that's like real bumpy like, duh, 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 and shaking the car away they're like we're gonna grade the road for them so one of the guys on the front of the car puts um uh these blades that's used in farming to kick up the dirt and put like trenches i can't think of the oh, like a combine uh, yeah like that on the front of his car and uh, Clarkson puts two uh, snowmobiles on the front of his car. And while they're going, one of the snowmobiles gets loose and just takes the fuck off. And they're just like, whoa, wait, oh, uh, uh, and it just, it's gone. <laughs> um, so that was a lot of fun. I was like, when I saw that, I was like, yeah, Killer of the Flower Moon can wait. I'm going to watch this. Mm -hmm. And that's what I got into. Um, uh, you, you may yeah. be pleased to know I, I did see that Reacher was um, greenlit for a third season. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Um, I'm hoping season three is more back to what we loved about season one, but, um, Sherlock homeless. Essentially. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there, that's, that's, it's, that's it's a fun built like a brick shit house too. Dude, so. my God. <laughs> he's fucking huge. He's a mountain of a dude, mountain uh -huh. of a man. Uh -huh. I'm like at that point, I'm just like, how do you wipe your ass? I mean, like, <laughs> well, I, that's where a bidet comes in handy. <laughs> that's you know what? That's that's some logistics I'd rather not consider at the moment. <laughs> uh, but hey, how about we get into it? Yeah, let's let's talk let's talk some movies. So well, we've already been talking movies. We've been talking TV shows. Well, that too, I guess. And okay. and you started half a movie. Does that count? Yeah, yeah. So let's talk in movies. <laughs> um so this is the grand ending to 1932. This is the Academy Award versus box office. And uh, I didn't say this initially to, to have a pun, but we're going to first talk about the Grand Hotel. <laughs> this, the Grand Entrance is our Grand Hotel. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, yeah, the Grand Hotel was the Academy Award win winner for Best Film in 1932. It's directed by Edmund Goulding, write, written by Vicky Baum. Baum? I'm not sure to pronounce that. It's got Greta Garbo as Grusinskaya. Grusinskaya? Grusinskaya. There you go. Uh, John Barrymore as Baron Felix von Giergren. Giergren. Uh, Joan Crawford as Flamschen. Flamschen. That's how they <laughs> pronounced it, was, was Flamschen. I'm just fucking it all up, letting you fix it. <laughs> uh, Wallace Beery, who we've seen several times before, as General Director Praising. Pricing. Pricing. Uh, Lionel Barrymore as Otto Kringlein. 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 And Louis Stone as Dr. Otterschlag. Otterschlag. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's a group of very different individuals staying at a luxurious hotel in Berlin deal with each of their respective dramas. There there were a lot of big names in this movie. Um, Greta Garbo. I just read them. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, no, like that's Greta Garbo, Joan Crawford, um, the two, uh, Lionel and John Barrymore. Um, mm -hmm. You would know... Their granddaughter, who is Drew Barrymore. I wonder when I saw that. Baron, I was yeah, like, oh. that's that. There's that whole family is known for for being actors. This going is back why to it's the, so hard to get into the film industry because if you're not born into it, <laughs> well, I mean they they go back to the late 1700s as actors, um, hmm. and like we, like you like you mentioned earlier, Wallace Beery, we've seen him in like six or seven of these movies. Yeah. <laughs> um, fun fact about this one: this was also the only movie. Um, that has that has won for best picture. That that was the only category it was nominated for was best picture. There were no other awards or nominations for any other actor or part of this movie. Well, see, I read that there was other movies that were like that, but maybe it's that weren't they? They weren't nominated for anything. It's like this is one of like three films that won best uh, film that didn't win anything else. 
but maybe these others were were nominated for something but didn't win. Yeah, this this was the only one that <clears> won <throat> that at least if if I read it correctly, that won Best Picture that wasn't nominated for anything else. Hmm. This was the only only thing it was up for, and it won. Well, um, I'll just give it away right now. Uh, I understand why. <laughs> <laughs> so, put this way, I didn't write down much about this flick, and we can just kind of walk through it. But I will say the opening was really freaking annoying. Um, it just kept cutting between different people on the phone saying like a random two lines, like "Oh yeah, I saw her on the stairs," and then it like goes to somebody else i'm like yeah. saw who on the stairs who are you what are you talking about they just kept jumping between people like that and that went on for several minutes and for a minute there i was like is this what this movie is no i could not finish this it it set up a lot of plots for those characters like with they they showed that scene with with pricing when he was talking with somebody he's trying to get this big merger so his yeah. company doesn't fold <clears throat> with um uh, Kringleine was on the phone. He said, yeah, I got this bad terminal illness. I've cashed out everything that I'm saving. I'm going to spend my last couple of days here in the hotel. And I'm going to have, I'm going to go out with a bang. Mm-hmm. And they, they set up, you know, their, their motivations and, and their arcs like in that one little section. Yeah. And I, as you're saying that I do remember some of those, but it didn't stick with me initially. Cause it just kept cut this person says something cut this person says something. cut this person says something and by the time that scene was done i was like not even listening anymore because it was just <laughs> I, I hate this get the fuck move on um that was a good one nice <laughs> i heard that through the headphones <laughs> oh gosh um are you yeah. sure you're okay are your fingers tingling uh i can't move them um, no. uh, <laughs> uh, hmm. that's not that's not good podcast over we're gonna go do something no. i gotta go call the police <laughs> anywho um but see there's a few there's a few storylines taking place at the same time so there's this prima ballerina that's essentially like tired of all this crap there's the baron who apparently needs to get some money because for some reason he owes somebody five grand but we never figure out why uh, and then there's the guy who's terminally ill and wants to just have a grand old time. Come to find out he worked at Pricing's factory. factory. He and so a, he, he knows Pricing. Yeah. And Pricing's trying to keep his business from going under. And all of these stories kind of intertwine a little bit. Um, I don't know if you want to go into the specifics of how they intertwine. I find a, a very terrible web there to try to remember every little tidbit of it. it, it there was a lot of intermingling between yeah. all of these characters. Um, and then, the, yeah, there was the the doctor that's just kind of like there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and also, like, I'm like, I was trying to figure out, like, I looked at pictures of him and I didn't see that thing all on his face. I was like, was that a choice for this movie? And if so, why did he have that on his face? He It, it wasn't, it was, it was scarring. Because he, he said that he was a, a surgeon in the war, and he had a, a grenade go off by his face. Okay. I, I'm not sure I caught that line of dialogue, but he's just walking around with this big thing on his face. And I'm like, I don't think that's real. Why is that there? Um, yeah, that's... that's I almost missed that line of dialogue. That, that's, yeah, that's, that's what he said, because he had a grenade go off. Okay. Well... And... It's like, how do I talk about this film? So, Baron tries to steal jewels from Greta when she's out of the room. Grusinskaya. Uh, or, well, what's her name? <laughs> no, her real name. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm Gre- not going to Gre- keep... Greta Garbo. That's what I thought, Greta. Yeah, I'm using their actor names because I can't pronounce that stuff. <laughs> um, Which is funny because I don't speak German. <laughs> or Russian, know. apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. well, it took place in Berlin. That, that would explain all the German names. Uh, yeah, that would make sense. Um, but she comes back because he was trying to steal it. She's apparently like, what was me? And I think she was like me about to kill herself too or something. And then he just stepped out like, no. Yeah. Let's talk. And then they start making love for some reason. Um, and then he's like, I'm going to run away with her because I love her. Even though he just flirted with some other chick earlier and had set a date with her. Mm-hmm. And then he like brushes her off on. That was it was Flamchen. Kurg, jurg, lurg, derg, whatever. 
You mispronounce these so badly, Cr- I don't even Cr- know who you're Cr- talking Cr- about. <laughs> Kringleine. Kringle. Man, you weren't even close. <laughs> well, like, the, the, the names are, like, so different from, you know, American names that I can't remember which one was which. And I was like, what was it? I know it started with a K. <laughs> Chris Kringle. Yeah. Santa Claus was dancing with her. Uh, but no, like, because the Baron became kind of friends with him and kind of like, oh, you go dance with her. And so now they know each other. And uh, since Kringleine had taken all his money out of his bank account, he had it all on him. And then Baron, like, thinks about stealing money from him after he wins some money gambling. But he's like, no, I like this guy. He's too nice. And so he gives his wallet back to him. Gets and a, he still gets needs a money. Of conscience, yeah. Yeah, he still needs money, and then he's like, well, I'm going to go steal it from Prizing, because he's a dick, and Prizing ends up shooting him. He, he, no, he, is, he doesn't shoot him. He, he beats him with a phone. Oh, is that what it was? Why did I think he shot him? Well, like, so he can, so he got caught in his room, and he goes, he goes over and confronts him, and then he yeah, punches right. him, and then Prizing punches him back, and then grabs a phone and beats him over the head with it. Yeah, no, I remember that now. And then he's all like, "Oh my god!" Like, he was here. He tried to steal from me. Yeah. Like, don't don't call the cops. And he obviously gets arrested. Uh, and then Santa Claus and the Kringlein. girl decide to Kringlein and run off together. Yeah, he he's like, "I'll take care of you. I got fourteen thousand dollars, which will last a month or two, something." Uh, and then Greta is expecting the Baron to meet her on the train so they can go away together and. Movie's over. Yeah, there was there was a line that the doctor mentioned in the beginning and the end of the movie, which I think perfectly encapsulates yes. this entire movie. Go ahead. Um, he's, how did he say it? He said, the Grand Hotel, people come, people go, nothing ever happens. Yep. That's this movie in a nutshell. Mm-hmm. Like, you saw a 12-hour period of this, and he describes it as like, nothing ever happens. Well... Yes and no. Because <laughs> yeah. there I mean, was some thievery, there was some shooting, there was some... There was a, mur- there was a murder. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean... Chris I said Chris, shooting again, didn't I? Jesus you did. Christ. Um, yeah, and then movie's over, and then a new set of people come in, and... I mean, is, is there going to be another murder? Is this like the worst hotel in Berlin? <laughs> I, I don't know. It, but it, you're going to have a grand time, regardless. Um... There were, the first half of this movie, I was like, God, this is so fucking boring. This is so fucking boring. Once we got to the point of him trying to steal the pearls, which kept changing size every time you saw him holding them for some reason. They went from this big string with giant pearls to like this little string with like little itty bitty marbles on Mm. it. Um, It got more interesting at that point, but I still didn't like this movie. (laughs) (laughs) It it wasn't my favorite either. I mean, like, Kringleine was... um... I mean, he was he was a fine character. I mean, he was nice and jovial and nice old man. You're like, hey, go you know, go win your money, dude. And mm-hmm. he's gonna go hang out with with the uh, Flamshin. Like, you, go get it, man. You got this. Yeah, and see, I, well, I think that's the main problem with this movie is they try to make this like this huge star-studded cast with all these different storylines that connect about that much and then separate again to the, to the point that like there's no real big story going on they're just like these little tiny little touch points and that's Mm -hmm. it which is why like there's not much to talk about this movie literally (laughs) the only point that i wrote down was hated the opening that is the extent of the discussion points that i brought yeah (laughs) ready to talk about in this movie because like it's not really a lot going on that's worthy of discussion no they're like like i said nothing ever happens it was fine I mean, I guess uh, not my favorite movie. I mean, the the cast was a lot of big names. Yeah. Uh, well, Joan Crawford, I don't think she wasn't big at that point. She was still no. She she new. would she would be big. And bigger. I read conflicting accounts, which is why I hadn't really brought them up. But apparently, like, I almost said Beery Mays, <laughs> not the the name Wallace of me. Beery. Wallace Beery. <laughs> hey, Beery Mays, hope you're listening. <laughs> um, Wallace Beery, like apparently, like walked out of a scene with her, like I'm not coming back until she can act. And the more I read about him is apparently he was like very, very conceited and egotistical about himself. Um, and then I read an account where like apparently Joan was so interested in like learn, like meeting Greta that she said hi to her every time they passed in the hall because they didn't have scenes together. 
And then she never got a response. And so finally she was like, I guess I'll just stop saying anything. And then when she walked back, Ray was like, are you going to say hi to me? I don't know if that's even real because I read another account where Joan was like too nervous to ever say anything to her. And Greta came up to her and was being all nice to her. And so, so I'm like, I don't know what the hell happened. But mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of conflicting stories about Joan Crawford's accounts uh, as being part of this movie. Changed her story. Uh, well, I don't know if it came from her or other people. I just I mean, we're, we're talking about anecdotal people. stories from, you know, 90 years ago. Yeah. Um, didn't like it. Yeah. That's that's pretty much it. I mean, didn't hate it. It was just It was fine. Boring. Nothing I mean, it, it 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 was fine. And not yeah. not my favorite movie. Um, do I consider it a waste of time? No. I mean, just I mean, just you get to see a lot of big names. That was it. Yeah. Um, what big I, names of their time. Yeah, big names of the time. <laughs> I barely know any of them myself, but <laughs> um, would I want to watch it again? Probably not. Yeah, no, me either. Um, any final thoughts, or do you just want to jump to the next one? Uh, we can move on. I mean, I think we've said everything we can really say about this one. All right. Well, then let's go to the box office winner, and that is the Sign of the Cross, which made two point seven million dollars in that year. Directed by Cecil B. DeMille, which is that the same, like, I'm ready for my close-up Mr. Exactly. DeMille? Yep. Um, I'm going to ask a question about that, see if you know the story. Because I know that quote, but I don't know the story. Um, writer, uh, written by Waldemar Young and Sidney Buckman. It stars uh, Frederick March as Marcus Superbus, uh, the prefect of Rome. Superb. Uh, Elissa Landy as Mercia. Claudette Colbert uh, from the Colbert Report, and also as uh, <laughs> I was, Empress... <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> Were you? Yeah. Uh, she stars as Empress Papea. Papea. Uh, Charles Lawton as Emperor Nero Claudius Caesar, and Ian Keith as Tegelinus? Tegelinus? Something like that. <laughs> I think it's Tegelinus. Uh, and it's a Roman soldier becomes torn between his love for a Christian woman and his loyalty to Emperor Nero. So the I'm ready for my close up, Mr. DeMille. I know that quote. What the hell is it from? Uh it's <sighs> Fail. <laughs> I, I dude, I'm spacing. All right. Um I know it was um it was kind of a play because Cecil B. DeMille was for his he was well known for like very big, extravagant type of movie sets. Like he did this one, he did uh the Ten Commandments and, and stuff like that. Not the one that I watched. Um one of the Wait, what? I've seen the one with Charlton Heston. No, this this would have been before yeah, that. Yeah, the one he did was nineteen thirty something or yeah. nineteen twenty something. I don't remember. Um, but that was a. It's. I think it was a joke. I don't know if anyone actually said, "I'm ready for my close up, Mister Deville." Um, I've seen that in. You just said Deville with a V. Oh my God, Demille. Sorry. <laughs> um, why did I say Deville? <laughs> um, I don't like as in Cruella. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, he, he for his hair it was. I'm black. ready for my new coat, Miss Deville. Yeah, um, there was what was it? Airplane? Is that was is that or um, Blazing Saddles? Where they made that joke? You're gonna ask me about a quote from Blazing Saddles, knowing for a fact I've tried to watch that three times and can't get past the first twenty minutes because I find it so boring. Fail. Yeah, <laughs> you've told me all, that's so a, funny. You tried I to make me watch it movie. and I couldn't do it. Uh, my wife is like, it's so funny, and I couldn't do it. It's just like. It's not for me. That's, and that's fine. I'll, I'll, I, I'll go to Spaceballs. Uh, I, I won't judge you too your... harshly. But... <laughs> <laughs> now, there was one of those movies had a, had a joke about that. Like, I'm, I'm ready for my close-up kind of thing. It was playing off somebody else. I don't, I don't know where it originated. Well, uh, hey, I'm listener, not... let us know. Yeah, let, if, if you know, please tell. I don't know. Um, I'll probably look it up later now you got me curious. <laughs> well, I actually meant to beforehand, but I forgot. Um, so... This movie starts with Rome burning, uh, and I have something I wanted to mention. Two things, actually. One, I'm curious if there's a, a character at the beginning of this that may have been a, a potential inspiration for Princess Leia, because she her like flowy toga looks very similar, and she's got hair buns. Hmm, and I was like, it's Princess Leia! Perhaps. <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to mention is like, I loved the dude playing Nero at the beginning. He was somehow drunk, high, and sexually aroused at the same time. Because he's just like, oh, I don't know. Bring me the food. 
go away. The way he's doing that, I was just cracking up laughing. I was like, I don't know if he's meaning to be funny, but I find this hilarious. N- Nero, uh, so it was based on the the Caesar Nero. Yeah. I, I'm sure you, you caught the whole reference, like Nero fiddled while Rome burned. You, you're not familiar with this? This is story? historical stuff, so no. Okay, so it's just going to go right over your Yeah. Head. <laughs> <laughs> Which um, is funny. I have a historical thing to say later no, on, but I do uh, remember. Yeah, Nero uh, was one of those types of emperors. Like, he was way into wine, overeating indulgence, you know, debauchery type of thing. That's that's what he did. So, mm-hmm. I mean, they're playing it as close, you know, they're playing it straight on that one. <laughs> well, like I said, I found, I was like, this dude's funny. I want to watch him another shit. <laughs> Because it, it was, yeah, I liked it. Um, but yeah, so essentially it's all about Rome you know, trying to kind of stamp out Christians and get rid of them. Well, if I remember, so Papea had convinced Nero that the cause of the fire was Christians. Did they say that in the yeah. film? I didn't catch that. Um, I know that, like, historically, if I'm not mistaken, like, he did blame it on the Christians. Uh, but I didn't catch it in the film where they said that. Well, Papea was his sister, I believe. Was it? Yeah. I thought it was played up as his wife because she's the empress. That, well, yeah, that's they, that happened a lot. Oh, so it was his sister and it he married his sister. His sister. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that happened a lot in those days. Hmm. Well, so I have some issues with this historically. It's called The Sign of the Cross. It takes place in 64 A.D., and the way the Christians, like, recognize each other is they each draw, like, essentially half a square to create the cross. And they're like, like, one will just put it there and they just kind of stand there to see if the other guy does anything. And the other guy does it. They see a cross. They know that, oh, we're both Christians. Mm-hmm. Um, based on what I read, the sign of the cross wasn't adopted into Christianity until the 3rd or 4th century. So we're a little off. A little off on the timelines. Yeah. And also, I specifically remember in school, and I don't remember what the symbol's called, but what they would actually do is one person would draw a little curve, and the other person would complete do another curve on the other side and cross over to make a fish. And that's how they figured out each other were a part of the Christian faith. Huh. So I'm just I did like, not know I just saw story. that. That's like the one thing I remember from <laughs> school, you know, because I forgot all of it. Uh, but no, like, I don't obviously do a lot of history, but I just saw that and I was like, that's not right. It was the fish. Mm-hmm. I did not know that story. I yeah. learned something today. But I don't remember what the fish was called. There's some name for that. The fish Jesus symbol. fish. The Jesus fish. That may be. May be. Uh, may be part of the fish tacos. I don't know. Um, mm, fish tacos. I know. I just suddenly wanted fish tacos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, so they did that cross. Two guys were like walking along and... Like idiots, they didn't brush the cross away in the dirt before they walked away. And two guys like chase them down, and they're about to kill them. And like some girl is trying to defend them because she knows them. And then the uh, the super bus shows up. The super bus. The super bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the super bus. Um, Marcus super bus, the perfect of Rome. <laughs> Sorry. Superbus, the prefect of Rome. Oh, it's like super nice. <laughs> That's how it's spelled. Superbus. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the magic superbus. Um, and it's, it's <laughs> yellow Miss and Frizzle? it falls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a but magic superbus. I just thought this was funny. So he happens to be riding by when they're like, like trying to drag him off to Nero to get, uh, the three of them off to Nero to get like murdered and stuff. And there's a huge... A go about stuff happening in like the town square. He pulls up and he's like, "Everyone, shut up! What's going on?" And then they're like, "These are Christians." And he looks up and he sees the woman, and I, all of a sudden, he's just like, "Everyone, go away! It's okay." And he lets them go. And I was like, "Nothing gets a good-looking woman out of anything bad quicker than a cop with a boner." <laughs> Seriously, he sees her; she's hot. Uh, you can go. You can go. You're free to go. <laughs> And then he, like, pursues her to try to, you know, make a, a relationship out of it, and mm-hmm. it never works, and yeah, but I was like, okay, okay, I, yeah, I, 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 mean, I, I see what you're putting down here, hey, you know, I smell you what know, you're stepping in. Pr- pretty girls get all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, also, like, I thought this was funny, this movie has an intermission, I was like, oh, I haven't seen that one of those in a little while. Yeah, that was, it was like a five minute intermission. Yeah, it was a while, I was like, fast forward, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> 
I was sitting there watching it like, oh, look at that. Maybe they're just going to come right back in. And then it faded to black with music playing. Like, nope, this is a legit intermission. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, they uh, essentially he's now pursuing her. Some other guy that's part of the army is like trying to backstab him to get his place. And like, like he's in love with a Christian woman and blah, 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 blah. Um, they eventually like attack the Christians, kill them. You know, like, they like swarmed a yeah, like late a meeting night. they were having. Yeah. Yeah, killed a bunch of them. And they're all being like the ones that survived are being taken out to like the Colosseum kind of thing to fight and animals are killing them and all this kind of stuff and gladiators and whatnot. And then at the end, Superbus decides to drive up the ramp. <laughs> um, <laughs> Superbus decides to walk up the stairs with her and just they both go to their death. Well, that he he had pleaded with Nero to like you know give her mercy, and he's like, eh. yeah, she denounces God. Yeah, if, if she renounces Christianity it. in front of, and then like the even world. at the end, he's like, you don't actually have to do it; just say it. <laughs> yeah, and see, and I had that thought too, but uh, from what I remember from my uh, studies of like Things. biblical stuff in history, um. Even just saying it, yeah. you're still forsaking God, even if you're just saying it to not be killed, which is supposedly, like, dirties the water of your faith, so you're not actually faithful even though you're lying. So, they can't do that. Hmm. Well, no, not, I wasn't using, I wasn't presenting it as an option. That was something he was, like, saying. Like, Oh, okay, my bad. Yeah, he's like, no, you don't actually, do, you don't have to do it, just say it. I'm like, no, I'm still not going to do it. Well, yeah, well that's I, I don't want to be it. around, you know, I, I'll just go with you, mm -hmm. and I'm going to get eaten by a tiger. Yeah, let's go, let's go die together. Um, the end. But I, I had one other call out I wanted to bring up. So, while he, while, before they're all, like, put to death, he had taken her out of the dungeons and whatever, and was keeping her in his house, because he was still trying to, like, get her to fall in love with him. Mm -hmm. Um, and at some point they're having essentially like a fucking sex party Yep. and they have this woman do the dance of the naked moon, which it's just her going like, huh, there's a moon and it's pretty. And, and I'm saying, I'm like, this is supposed to be seductive. It, it was. So if I recall correctly, like this, this particular scene was like cut out of the movie. Yeah. I was getting to that too. Um, cause, cause it, it was too seductive. Yeah. It was, it was like, Oh, what are they doing? Um, but it was the whole point of this thing was like, oh, she's kind of a stick in the mud. Let's let's do this dance thing to to try to like liven her up a little bit. And she's just standing there awkwardly, like, oh, this is this is really weird, but okay. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, this is not seductive or sexy at all. I equated it to a, a Lane Bennis from Seinfeld when she would dance mm. with her little awkward like, because that's what she was doing too. And I'm just like. This was considered hot, and they banned it in film or in movie theaters because it was just it was, too it was seductive, provocative, too it was, sultry. Well, it was provoc it was prov uh, provocation of lesbianism is is what it was cut out for. Yeah, because she was because she danced and looked at the woman that danced away. Yeah, that's a <laughs> oh, would these people have problems with the shit we have in film today? No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's so it was cut out and for the theatrical release it was added back in, something else was cut out. Then both scenes were added in later for like DVD releases and stuff like yeah. that and it was just a mess. Just a mess. Yeah. No, um I didn't hate this movie. I didn't love it, but I semi enjoyed it in the sense that I'm like I'm not like, oh this movie's garbage, I never watch it. Um probably would never watch it again. But I was still like, wasn't bad. And I wonder if my wasn't bad all comes from the freaking two minutes of Nero at the beginning where I'm just like, that dude's funny. That's probably it. Because <laughs> it didn't, I, um, I didn't have, it didn't have the same effect on me as it did you. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, that one part was funny, but I can overlook that for the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'm, I'm gonna cut the line. And go first by saying that if when I have to pick out of these two, I would pick the sign of the cross. Just because I thought Grand Hotel was pretty much boring the whole time, whereas this one I was at least not bored. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of the exact opposite. Yeah? Because, like, with this one, I it, it, was, it was tough holding my attention um, 
for one, there wasn't subtitles on what I watched, so it was kind there of there was tough. on mine because uh, I had the DVD. Oh, uh, look at you! <laughs> Aren't you special? Hey, I offered to let you borrow. You did, it. you did. Um, but for what I watched, didn't have subtitles, so it was kind of tough to hear some of the dialogue. But it it didn't really keep my attention. Mm-hmm. Versus Grand Hotel, which I was actually able to pay attention to. Yeah. Um. So I'm gonna be like the opposite of of you on this one. Yeah. I mean, if I if I were to just based on the second half of Grand Hotel, I'd probably let it win. Yeah. But including the first half that I was just like, I'm so bored, I'm spaced out, I don't care what's going on. That and uh, I, I mean, I've done a little bit of studying of biblical history and stuff, stuff. like that because it was interested me at one time. Um. But. So we obviously disagree on which one we'd say would win out of those two. But mm-hmm. for the entire 1932 collection of films we've watched, I would not pick either of these motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy for me. I think The Champ was the best movie we watched. Out of I, I, w- I would agree with that. Like that's, that's like I said, that's a movie that I would debate on watching a second time. Um, and I'm also thinking of watching the one from the 70s because I liked that movie enough. So... Uh, I think it's very easy to say the best movie of 1932, the Academy Awards, and the box office got it wrong. Yep, so would. not only do the the Academy and all the people of 1932 spending their dollars in the wrong place. Yeah. <laughs> but the champ was in like the top five. It was, and, yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, I could be remembering this incorrectly, but I think was the champ also nominated for best film but lost maybe? I don't think it was nominated, no. No, or maybe I'm thinking of another award season it was part of. I don't know. But, yeah, I think The Champ was the best film of 1932. I, I, I would agree Easy. with that. Out of, out, of, out of the six movies we watched, that was by far my favorite. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, any final thoughts? I, I got nothing. No, I'm, I'm good. Cool. All right, well, then what we'll probably be doing next time could potentially be a little different. Yeah, we're going to we're talking um, about a little format change. Yeah, see, what we're thinking here is watching a lot of these old movies, I'm like, it's hard to watch some of these old movies. And I'm like, would I really be watching them if not for trying to do this format of the podcast? No. <laughs> <laughs> so Some of them have been interesting from a historical perspective. That's true, that's true. But, and other ones I'm just like, this is a, why am I watching this? Oh, wait, I have to. I mean, yeah, we've watched (laughs) like 30, 40 films or something like that at this point. And I think there's like two or three that I've enjoyed. Yeah. So I was like, if we're not enjoying doing this, do you think any listener would actually enjoy doing this? So are we wasting our time with this format? Perhaps a film historian might be, but... I, I, again, it's it's tough to, because um, I mean we we have very busy lives. It's mm-hmm. tough to sit down Fit and make make all month, this yeah. time to watch this stuff. And like you said, I mean with some of these, it's like I really, I mean this, I I would turn this off, but I have to finish it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's like, do we keep going down this road? Understanding that there's a lot of these, like understanding that in about fifty years. Uh, getting up to the 1980s, we'll probably find a lot of... We'll start enjoying all of these. Um, so do we keep doing this to try to get there? Do we cut it down to just doing the Academy Award winner versus the box office? Uh, and do we just only have to do two movies instead of six each time? Or do we completely change the format entirely and go with something like like the movies that made us or the movies that we enjoy? Like maybe like every episode, one of us brings a film for the other one to talk about and we actually like... Maybe watch it and discuss it at the same mm. time, like we've done with uh, Robocop and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But that means one of us is going in blind and potentially watching a movie we've never seen before, which can have its own quirks. Because if you're trying to watch this movie you've never seen before and then trying to talk about it, you're not catching the whole movie. Yeah, you're, not, you're, you're missing the movie, yeah. So then is it more just we talk about movies we actually want to talk about from whatever generation, but we still prepare beforehand like this? So essentially, we're we're. We're mulling about what this podcast is going to be. Because, like, I enjoy having the conversation with you and going through this stuff. But the, 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 the sub- prep work. <laughs> the, the subject matter is questionable in some cases. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to be figuring that out uh, and hopefully have whatever the format's going to be for the, the next episode. Even though we're only, I think, 
14 episodes in at this point not including the special commentary ones yeah it's, it's uh, and it's, we're already like mm, let's change it's it's a grind man i'm not gonna yeah. lie it really is a grind <laughs> yeah so we'll figure that out um we'll, we'll talk about it i'll have i'll have my people call your people yeah sounds good man well <laughs> until then i'm jeffrey i'm anthony we'll catch you at the movies